So this is the first tweet. Uh, Jamie, who should be Arsenal's captain? Uh, interesting one. I, I presume this is off the back of the uh, scenes that we saw with Granite Xhaka. Firstly, what did you make of that incident and who do you think should be the Arsenal captain for the season? It's easy for me to come on now and say he shouldn't be captain. Th this decision was made at the start of the season and I don't look at anyone else in that squad as captain material. Xhaka is captain of his country. Mm. So if you've got someone who's captain of your country and you're deciding who should be captain, and I think the way they decided the captain was wrong. The players voted, you mean? The players voted yeah. on it. But what that does tell you is what the players think of him. So the yeah. players in the dressing room actually think he should be the captain. So I'm not going to just say it to be, as a lot of people are saying now, on the back of what happened last uh, when he came off against Crystal yeah. Palace, that it, you know, we can, oh, he should never have the captaincy again. He probably is the best person to have, have the captaincy. As I said, for those two reasons, really, I think it might be difficult for him to keep it now. Because of what happened? Yeah, yeah. because I just think uh, with the supporters and the feeling now, it may actually be better for the club and, you know, the atmosphere around the team and the, and the stadium. When, certainly when they play a hole and it maybe goes to someone else. But there's no one in that squad who you could have said at the start of the season was more captain material than, than Shaka. Mm. I don't think he's the greatest player. I think he's had a poor season. Uh, but certainly if he wasn't going to get it now, I think sometimes when you're struggling to pick a captain, for the reasons I've mentioned, sometimes just give it to the best player in some ways and, mm -hmm. and probably maybe give it to Aubameyang, mm -hmm. maybe. Because mm -hmm. uh, I can't think anyone else off the top of me. I mean, David Luiz is not my cup of tea as a player, but in some ways he is a leader in some mm -hmm. ways and not a leader in a lot of others, but <laughs> he's got a, a sort of a big personality. Yeah. Really, in some ways, and I could imagine that a lot of the, the younger lads in the dressing room looking up to him. He's a big character. He's, you know, he's won big things. He's played in yeah. big, uh, for big player. clubs. Yeah. yeah, played for Brazil and World Cups also. So that may be an option. They're the only two I can really think. But I still wouldn't really want the two of them as as, as captain. Either, Interesting. So not a name that jumps out for you. So good, good question. That good first question. Let's have a look at our next question. Young and I believe uh, we're going to go for you for this one. Will Liverpool win the league? Oh, big Liverpool one, fan. You don't want to answer this. You don't want to jinx it, is that I why? don't want to jinx it, man. <laughs> um, a few seasons ago, even last season, I was very vocal when we was doing well. And um, it come back to bite me. But um, I think this is the best we've looked in a very, very long time. We started the season very strong. Um, I just think we've just got to keep it up now, really. And just, yeah, we get into the international break, couple wins, I'll be happy with that. It does look set to be another great title race, Jamie, doesn't it? It does. I, I kind of but think City will come back uh, and go on a run of tw mm. 10, 12, 15 games, just winning constantly. Because Liverpool, uh, Liverpool and City were in this position around about Christmas last year, New Year, where Liverpool had a six, seven point lead and City came back at them. I just think if, if Liverpool could win the City game, I don't, not just the points, I think psychologically, psychologically as well. Yeah. I think that put them in a great position. So, at this moment, I think Liverpool are slight favourites. I think if Liverpool were to go into the international break, as Jungen said, on the back of two wins, mm. and that would put them nine points clear, I think they'd take some stop. And I think they'd be big favourites then. OK. Right, let's have a look at another question. Loads of questions coming. They're coming thick and fast. This is the next one. It says, should Oli remain Man United's manager? What do you make of that? What have you made of the, the sort of criticism that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's had and Man United start? Does it look like they're starting to turn results around? Is, is he the right man to stay in the job for you, Jamie? I think he is now. I don't think Man United should be thinking of changing a manager any time this season. Mm. I think they've got a big decision to make whether Ole um, is the manager at the start of next season. Right. Really, because what you do when you have a manager is you, no one no one starts a season thinking they're going to change the manager through the season because you don't really want to do it it's too much upheaval mm. who you bring in you've bought players so really the best time if you want to change your manager is the end of the season or mm. towards the end and give a manager a full pre-season so Man United have got to look at it do we want Oli as the manager for obviously this season but the whole of next season now if they do fine that, that, that's up to them but, but what, what they won't want to do is next season in October, November if they make a bad start then think, oh, what do we do, what do we do? So that, that's sometimes the problem for a manager. You think if, if a manager finishes this season not great yeah. and you're not quite sure, and, but you think, well, you know, if you started the season badly, would you get rid of him? You say, yeah, mm. change it now. Yeah. That's what I, I always think. So I just think at the, n n no, no problem at all this season, but maybe when the summer comes, mm. 
you know, would you uh, go the full season again with, with Oli? But if Oli has a good season this year, finishes it strongly, does well in the Cups, in Europe, whatever it may be, there's lots of competitions he can do well in. Uh, of course, keep him in there. OK, let's get to one more question. Young, we're going to go to you for this one. It says, uh, what has Frank Lampard done right this season so far to make a young side feel very experienced? I've got to say, it's been a great start yeah. for Frank Lampard at Chelsea. I think he's done a brilliant job, really. I think he's just really trusted the young players, mm. especially like using the lads he had at Derby as well. Mason Mount, giving him that. He's like cemented that number 10 role, ain't mm. he? And I think he's just really trusted them and just let them just really just play their game and just, yeah, yeah really. Jamie, do you think that the transfer ban's almost been a blessing in disguise for Chelsea because it's allowed them to bring through so yeah. many young players? You know, Tomori's, Callum Hudson-Odoi, Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham. They're all key parts of this Chelsea team now. I think he's a brilliant. I, I was a little bit worried for Chelsea and Frank at the start of the Were season. You? Yeah, I was because, uh, you know, young manager, mm. not much experience, lost the best player in the league in Hazard, couldn't bring people in. We know Chelsea have had a great U team for years. And, uh, but it, it's a different kettle of fish going into the first team. So they were going to give them a chance, fair enough. But they haven't just you know, took the chance. They've, they've looked like proper top players mm. where you're thinking, actually, in two or three years' time, this could be a really special mm. club and team you know, with homegrown players. You think of what Manchester United did all those years ago. But there's no doubt over the next couple of years that will have to be supplemented with, with big-name players and superstars who can take them back to really challenging for the league. I don't see them challenging for the league this season, but... I actually think if Chelsea get in the top four this season, Frank Lampard's done a brilliant job, and I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know they picked up a cup competition mm. uh, yeah. along the way also. So it really does look exciting times, and, and the brilliant thing is the supporters are loving it. And even at the yeah. start of the season when they were having a few iffy results, everyone was behind it. The supporters yeah. are still behind it because they hadn't seen this before with young players coming through. So I think that helped Frank in that he always had the support of his own crowd mm. and also the media in some ways because he couldn't buy a player, so he was always going to get. That little bit longer, if yeah. you like, on the on the back of a few you know results at the start of the season. But you know the way they're playing, and and actually now I'm looking at it from a Liverpool point of view, you think what a result that is for Liverpool going to Chelsea and winning. Yeah. And you look yeah. at it now because no. at the time you thought you'd expect Liverpool to go there and win, yeah. which they did. But you actually look at Chelsea now and you think you wouldn't want to go to Chelsea. Mm. On that note, do you think they will finish top four this season? Tough to say so early on, but do you expect to see them in the Champions League I, I think they will. Yeah. Young and do you agree? Yeah. I think, do you know what, just to add to Jamie's point, I think Lampard not having, like, not being able to get any transfers, I think that's taken the pressure off him. OK. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I do badly, I haven't been able to sign anyone anyway. So mm. I feel that's taken the pressure off him. And, then... and what, what we shouldn't forget is... It's all Hazard leaving, so they lost the best attacker. Yeah. yeah. But in some ways this season, they've lost the best midfielder in Kante. He's hardly played. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And the best defender is Rudiger, and he hasn't played. played so, yeah. so you actually think of what they've lost. It isn't just Hazard. This season, obviously those players to come back, so you think how strong they'll be then. Have one experienced centre-back alongside of, you know, a young one. Kante, who is as good as anything in the world mm. in midfield. So, but he's hardly played. So I'm get those two back, I'm pretty confident they will finish top four.